Hello and welcome to section 2, Tones, lesson 4, Tone Pairs. So in this episode we are going to talk about tone pairs and learn all about them. So why are they useful, which tone pairs you should learn, and how you should learn them. We're also going to go through all 20 of them with plenty of examples for you to listen to and practice. And finally we're also going to talk about examples of what learners often have problems with based on my experience teaching pronunciation to lots of people. So let's get started. So why tone pairs? Well they cover a large majority of words you actually need to say because most words as I have said earlier in this course are uh, actually two syllables long and that means that tone pairs cover uh, what you need to learn. Uh, it also covers the most important uh, tone changes. Uh, so most of the changes are covered in these things. We talked about O and E, for example. We talked about the third tone and so on. All these things are covered. And finally, the neutral tone is also included. So that's nice. Uh, there are all, only 20 pairs in, in total. And if you do the maths, you can figure that out pretty easily. There can be four syllables or four different tones on the first syllable. And there can be five on the second because we also have a neutral tone, right? So it's 16 for the normal tones, four times four, plus four examples of the neutral tone. So that's 20. And it's not that hard to learn 20 words really well if you spend some time on it. And you can then use these patterns to learn uh, lots of other words. And how you use these then, once you have learned them of course, is that you transfer what you have learned to another word. And this requires you to be really sure that the pronunciation that you've learned is correct. So you learn one word to perfection and then you apply that to something else. So for example, we learned the word for cup in the previous lesson, so that was bades, right? Bades. Now, if you're extremely sure that you're saying that right, because you've practiced it so much and you've had it verified, you've gotten feedback and you've done all these things, you've listened to your own recordings, you can hear that it's right. Bades. So you can say that really well. Now, let's say you encounter another word, let's say mama, and you think that's somehow off, it's wrong, or someone corrects you. Then you can simply, you know, transfer that to another word, and that works pretty nicely. So I'll give an example here. And uh, that would be if you have studied mi fan, mi fan, so rice. Let's say you're sure how to say mi fan. Now you encounter the second word, which is kao shi, and somehow you don't get it right. Maybe someone says your first tone, uh, the first tone, the, the one on the first syllable, i.e. Uh, the low tone, kao shi, the kao bit is wrong. And then you can say to yourself, mi fan, mi fan, because you know that's right, mi fan, kao shi. Mi fan kao shi. So you can copy that tone pattern from the word that you're sure of to the new word that you find difficult. And I've done this with lots of people and it really does help. Uh, most people are able to transfer tone patterns like this. It might not be immediate that you can then just say the, the target word uh, flawlessly, but at least you can do so immediately after saying the word you do know. So this is a very powerful way of transferring pronunciation from something you know to something you don't know. So now we're going to look at uh, all the 20 tone pairs. So I'm going to go through them one by one and we're going to look at them. We're going to give three examples for each and I'm also going to talk about what kind of mistakes learners often make for these tone pairs. So we're going to do them in order. So we start with uh, the fir two first tones then, one plus one. So you see the graph here as well, so you can see the visual representation. So here we have two high tones in a row. So uh, the chosen example here is Feiji, airplane, Feiji, and feel free to say after me when I say these things. So Feiji, and the next one is Fenzhong, minute, Fenzhong, and we have Jintian, today, Jintian. So for most learners, this feels awkward, and it feels actually even more awkward if you have even more than two first tones, but saying two of the same tone in a row is hard, and saying two high flat tones in a row is even weirder. So what many students do is that they kind of chicken out on the second one and say something like feiji, or feiji, or do whatever. They change something on the second syllable because they can't stand having two in a row. But you just have to do it that way. Feiji is the way people say airplane. That's how it sounds. So make sure you keep two high flat tones. Feiji 
and Fenzhong and Jintian. Okay, let's go to the first tone plus second tone. So nothing weird here, it's just a straight combination, so it's a high tone plus a rising tone. So the first example is Zhong Guo, Zhong Guo. So it's a flat Zhong Guo, okay, say after me, Zhong Guo. And then we have Fei Chang, Fei Chang.